Borrow Card Success, brought to you by Craig Charles of Crown Cuts Academy, JC, Crown Cuts Academy, Bristol, Virginia, and now Proficient Nail Academy, downtown Johnson City. Spreading love is the Tri-City way. Hold on, hold on, let's go back. Spreading love is only one way, and that's the Crown Cuts way. That's how we do it. We spread love all the time. You know, it's all love in Johnson City as it is. We back again with my co-host. Look like he's freezing over there, Mr. <laughs> It's a little chilly out here. But, uh, Jordan Barr, J. Bob on Instagram, representing Studio 423. Hope y'all having a good time, a good day. I ain't been here in like, what, three weeks, two, yeah. three weeks, it's something like a, that. In a minute. It's good to be back on. Back on the set. Today, we're going to have a special episode. Today, we're going to talk about sober living and recovery resources, how those intertwine. It's giving people an opportunity, giving people a chance. We have two great friends of mine that, um, Two awesome people. I'll let them introduce themselves, and then we'll jump into this podcast. Ladies um, Lisa Nichols. Shane Tolles. Shane Tolles. And Shane is a barber at the school, and I'll let t- Shane tell a story. And Miss Lisa Nichols, uh, I don't know if you guys knew, but um, several months ago, last year, starting in the summertime, I got an opportunity to go to the jail in Johnson City, and I worked with 10 women to help them get their license for nails. I'm a dual instructor, so it was kind of my first time ever teaching nails in the industry. And we'll talk about it, we'll get into that. But first, I'll let these guys tell their stories and why it's important to give people an opportunity and a chance because the bottom line is everyone wants a career. Everyone wants want to be able to take care of themselves and their family. And a lot of times we forget about people who go through certain situations, um, sober living, people who are in jail. Um, and one of the key things are to help with the recidivism rate, we have to take care and help people get the resources to help themselves when they mm-hmm. get out. Because if you get out without the resources, what happens? Man, you, you get right back. The same thing. Right it's back. Hard. Same friends, same, yep. same drug choice, Absolutely. Same everything. So when you hear that, Jordan, what do, what do you think about that? About like, I think it's, I think it's, it's nice to have or give people a chance or some type of other outlet, especially when they're in there. Cause I feel like that keeps them from thinking about the past of what the stuff they've done and stuff they went through and kind of helps them propel into making their life a little bit better, you know, as they get out or while they're in there. And the bottom line is most people just want opportunity. Most people just want a chance. Yeah, most people would be like, yeah, throw the keys, lock them up, forget about them. But hey, these are our neighbors. These are people who are gonna get out of jail one day who are gonna get back on their feet. And what do you want them to do? Just stay down the rest of their lives, or do you want to help? Everyone has been in a position where they needed help before. So when it's an opportunity to think about your community, help your community prosper and push them in a field, especially the field that we love, and we know the gratification that we get from being in our industry where you're not going to get judged. I mean, everybody just wants a job that they're going to love. Mm. We're well, not going to get judged. And a lot of times, where well, you're making some decent money too as well. When it's legal. That's a big thing you don't have to worry about, you know, always being caught looking over your shoulder. You know? Right. And I think our industry offers a, a plethora of those careers, cosmetology, aesthetics, nails, barbering. You know what I mean? Those are opportunities that we, we love our industry. We love our job. More often than that, you talk to a barber, he's going to love his job. He's going to love his career. A cosmetologist, a nail tech, esthetician, so forth and so forth. So, you want someone to kind of be able to be in a position to say the same thing. So today we're going to start, you guys, so who is Shane and how did Shane get to this point to want to be a barber? Uh, <clears throat> Shane was unruly. I was unruly for a lot of my life. Like I got in trouble at a young age. And uh, as I got a little older, I hit a, I hit a white brick wall. Mm-hmm. Got incarcerated for my first time, and I looked at uh, 44 years. Mm. And uh, you know, I got I got off with six years. And uh, you know, after that, you know, I made I made a promise to my father that no matter how hard it gets, I would never take from anybody. You right. know, I would either go without or work. Mm. And uh, you know. 
how I became a barber or how I, be, how I became wanting to be a barber is because I got clean. Right. You know, getting clean is, it's mind altering. You go so many years being under the influence of anything and everything you get your hands on. The people that you're around are also mind altering. It's always negative stuff. You don't get no positivity from these people. You know, everybody just quietly brings each other down. Right, right. You know? And once I got out of that and, uh, you know, I accepted some things and went back and took care of my old, my old warrants, um, I was about, I was about a year clean. And well, a little over a year clean. And <clears throat> uh, we just got new clippers in and I was just in a foul mood. And I just started cutting one of the trustees' heads and it took me two and a half hours. Well, I mean, that's that's normal time when most students start school anyway. Yeah, yeah I said my first my first one took me two and a half hours too. Yeah. Probably a little bit longer than that, actually. <laughs> it didn't, never came back <laughs> yeah. after that, but part of it. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was it but the the whole thing for me was is the conversation that we had. Right. It was the sitting on milk crates this high in the pantry room, cutting hair, listening to listening to the radio and just cutting it up. And those two hours, man, the, that that time flew by. So yeah. did you know you wanted to be a, get into this industry before that, or just something no. that just kind of? It happened right then, and then it happened whenever the guards started asking me to cut their beard right. and their hair, and I'd have a guard on duty sitting in my sitting on my milk crates, right, just right in front of all the cameras, just cutting cutting hair. So 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 that, there was a revelation that came to you why you were doing this, performing the services for the trustees, the inmates, um, the guards, and something just said to you, you want to be a barber, you want to get into this yeah, industry. I, but as we talk, you don't want to just be a barber though. No, not at all. I want to go, I want, I want all of it. I want to know how to do the cosmetology because females are, to me, are a little more important you know, it's harder for females. We all are important. Yeah, but in addiction, it's harder for women to get out of it than it is a man. Okay. You know, it's just just how that goes. Instead of getting into like a doctoring of it, right? It's it's very difficult. So you want to kind of do like kind of minister to people while they're in your chair, people just, who go through certain situations. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hearing. I just want to listen, right? And then be a part of your convers, conversation because it's not my place to tell them what to do, but. Whenever, some, whenever you talk about things, and that's what I've learned in recovery too, you talk about things and it gets you, to, it's, it feels so good, man. It, when you start talking about it, I don't know how many times I choked up in the beginning of even, before I even said a sentence, mm. I just knew what I was going to say. I knew that whenever I was about to say it, it's coming from my heart and right. there's all these people about to hear it. And, and a lot of times it's just hearing something positive. Hmm. Some affirmation saying that, hey, you can do this. I'm proud of you. Someone to hear someone say that you care. And I think those are some important words that people go through recovery and those type of situations. That's all you want to hear sometimes. And a, a positive conversation because it turns things around. Yeah. Positive conversations. I'm a little different. Um, I like to keep a lot of things to myself. Right. You know, like uh, religion and being grateful about things, I kind of like to keep that in. But the thing that hits me the most is whenever you get a, uh, a video message on your phone from a guy in another house just telling you, hey man, you're worth it today. I right. love you. Mm. God loves you. You know, that that's where it's like, you know what? I spent my entire life not wanting to be around anybody because I didn't trust nobody. And I didn't like you off the rip. So when you hear, when you hear this, Jordan, what do you think is going through your mind? Obviously, he's he's went through some things that I probably don't understand, and uh, I feel like I feel like and not no, nothing against women or anything, or like not saying anything different from anybody, but I feel like men really keep a lot of their emotions inside, like he says, and sometimes we do need that person to talk to and that person to push somebody, you know, because I mean I've had people like that too, and sometimes it's kind of hard to put yourself out there because. I mean, it's, it's, it's very 
sensitive stuff to you and you don't want to tell nobody like, how you feel. Mm. And but it's it's good to also put you know put yourself out there because that's, that's going to help you with your with how you feel about things and like I don't know it's just like it's just nice to have somebody to talk to or to somebody to just. Here you talk, are. Like, yeah, and, you know, everybody needs somebody, everybody needs somebody to talk to, and it helps so much to have that, especially with that being in barbering. Barbering, like, uh, is more than just cutting hair because, mm -hmm. like, you'll get people in your chair that come to get their hair cut, but they really just need somebody to talk to. Half the time, I'll have somebody, they'll come in there and just, like, start talking and telling them how what happened that day or the week of, and they'll be like, man, this, this, this went down, and yeah, just, it's like, it feels like, this is like them, like their therapy session. Yeah. Like, it's like they're explaining to me, talking to me, yeah. how, what I'm gonna give to them, like what I would, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, Affirmation? Yeah, pretty much. And it's just, everybody needs that. And it's, you know, it's nice just to be able to reciprocate that back to people. And once you understand that fully, I feel like your the growth in yourself is gonna be so much more like you, you, you grow more when you talk about all people. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so now, Lisa, here you are. Um, <clears throat> tell your story. So, um, how, 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 just tell your story, just from the beginning, because you've been through a lot. Yeah. And I've heard some of the stuff that we've talked about, and just tell your story. Um, well, <laughs> I, I want to do little. I would always, you know, I'd put little scotch tape on my fingers and paint them like I have fingernails on, and you know. Always been interested in it. Would go have my nails done all the time. And then I started watching YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. And then started being able to actually do nails. Right. But I didn't have the school part behind it. The so, resources, you have the resources yes, right, to get to exactly. it. Right, exactly. And life so happens. So I was doing a three year sentence in Washington County Jail. And uh, Sergeant Box came to me and said that there was a, um, Pro oh. Cuts was going to have a program mm -hmm. and asked me if I'd be interested. And I said, yeah. Um, and then that's when I came and I met you, Craig. So, so talk about before how um, your journey in life, what, some of the stuff that you've been through um, that kind of held you back from accomplishing your Addiction, goal. addiction, um, money, like I didn't know how to do it, how to get started. Um, no one believing in me, giving me that push, you know, telling me that I could do it, you know. So, so it's important sometimes just to have a support yep. system of people just believing you because yeah. If you've grown up through life and no one is letting you know that, hey, I believe in you, and then obviously you go into a situation, you're married, you have kids, and those things continue, you're like, yeah, kind of like a deer in the headlights. Yeah, and you know, and like, I'm not the, I, well, I didn't think that I was the brightest person in the world that, you know, so I never attempted to do, you know, the school part of it, because I was like, I, I ain't gonna be able to do it, you know? I, I did, I didn't make such good grades in school. I just, man, I, I can't do it. So I just always thought I couldn't until, you but know. Sometimes you just, like you said, you just need some affirmation. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's like where you came in. <laughs> you, every day you'd say, you're worthy. You can do it. You, you're smart. You know, every day. You so, th okay. So, so now talk about the, the opportunity you got yep. at the jail. Um, Sergeant Boggs said that there was a program, <laughs> um, which was Crown Cuts, was going to be coming. And... They were going to pay for the course, even if you happen to get out before the course was over. It was still covered, and you could get um, an actual license when you got out. But I thought it was going to be for cutting hair originally, so, and I expected to see, you know, some little old lady, you know, walk in. So here, I'm first day class, and then here you walk in. I was like, completely different than anything I thought it was going to be, and it was nails, which that was even better to me because it was nails. Right. So, um, but you... Uh, I remember like the first week you just build confidence, you confidence building because you said a person that's confident will have make less errors in the field and in their skill. So when you when you when, when you make learning fun, yeah, you, yeah, you and it was it fun. More. It was fun. And some of the things that we did, what was the first, some of the things that we did the first day? We started this thing where every day before we started class, we would start with a quote. Yep. <clears throat> and what the quote was, every every student had to come with their quote and talk about what the quote meant to them. I felt that was important in a way of building confidence. Talk about those times, just how excited you were and the other girls were just to come and give their oh, quotes yeah. that day. Oh yeah, we were, we're, we were all tickled. Like when it, we didn't have class on the weekends, we were all 
just heartbroken. We <laughs> was. Bummed out. We <laughs> were, man. We, it sucked, man. We, we was. We, we can't wait to go back to school. So, but one girl, brother had died. And so then, you know, she was looking for a quote and, and, and we all sat down with her and helped her find one. And it, she's like, thanks guys. That, that helped me out so much. You don't even realize how much that just helped me out. So, so then, when you hear Lisa's story, Shane, you know, what was, a lot of people's stories are similar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I hear her story. I think about all those times doing that uh, MRT class. That's what I think about. And uh, the, the hope, the, the feeling of uh, somebody else believing in you. Yeah. Even whenever you don't feel like you're worth believing in yourself. Big thing, especially when you're incarcerated. Mm -hmm. You don't feel like, uh, I mean, you got people in there that you could talk to. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the extent of it. Like a, a week later, you would be beating their brains out from underneath the stairs. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's important to kind of have something to keep you busy, something to look forward to while yeah. you're in there. And your mind runs. Well, Steve, we, we had to have a job to take the course, which right. that was fine with me. I wanted to work, but um, so you had to have a job to take the course. So you, what time we wasn't in class, as soon as we was done with class, we had to go you know, work in the kitchen until like seven or eight at night. So we stayed busy constantly. So it kept us busy, you know, doing the course and, and something to look forward to. and Keeping you active. Yeah, and, then and if you got in trouble, you lost everything. Right, so. mm -hmm. and one of the key things are, right? It, it wasn't like, they, I was having them take a test like twice a week. <laughs> but they was up for it because they were looking forward to studying. They were looking forward to reading the material when they go home yep. at night. Sometimes some of the girls would get off of work 10, 11 o'clock and the lights would be off. Yep. And we had to take a test the next day, but they came and they persevered and they passed. Because they're giving them, giving them a purpose, a reason. My to lowest grade in the whole something. class was a, a, one time I made a 76. I was just heartbroken. He was like, at least it's just, it's just bad record. Like, please let me take the test over. Especially Jessica Hill was tickled to death. We'd be asking for more homework and the other girls would be like, oh my God, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that magic word you said. Remember what you just said? The purpose. Yeah. yeah. When you hear the word purpose, what does that mean? Oh, I'd be a little purpose for me was, I oh. don't Man, I tell you what, I I traveled everywhere. I did all kinds of stuff trying to find my purpose, and I didn't find it until I came back to the one place that I ran from for ten years. So, purpose to me is just faith. What about you, Lisa? What do you when you hear the word purpose? What does that mean to uh, you? Purpose. What you're supposed to do. What you're supposed to be. Because I mean, for when I moved before I became a barber. Uh, I used to be real depressed because uh, I mean I used to work in a factory, and I worked in a factory for about seven eight months, and uh, I'd always think about man, what am I? What's my purpose for being here? Like why am I here? Is because uh, I'm just I feel like I'm without a purpose. I feel like you just not you not you not anything. You just you just there. Yeah, you just existing for no reason. Well, that's that's how you know. When you find something that you really truly love is when you are happy when you're doing it and you actually feel like you're helping other people. It's not just about yourself. Right. So once you find that, I mean, I feel like it's worth more than any type of money in the world. So that's, that's, that's what I feel like a lot of people in the world, they haven't found their purpose and they're just really just living. They're not really truly living. Like they're just, just here, you know what I'm saying? So now here you are, Shane, you say, do you remember that, that decision you made when you said, I want to go to barber school? And oh, yeah. I, I still have my journal. I wrote it down February 28, 2022. No, 2023. And then uh, I got out June 21st, June 22nd. I was knocking on your door. And, and, and that's the importance of this podcast because you guys are going to inspire people. We are in over... 70 countries right now. Yeah, my, my, my advice to the whole thing is if you feel it and you want to do it, you just got to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, don't tell anybody what you want to do except for somebody 
that you know isn't going to try to step on your dream. Sabotage. Yeah. Your biggest, your biggest dream is the one you keep to yourself. So do you find people, a lot of people sabotaging you, trying to sabotage in, in certain ways? Man, I, I, I feel there's a lot of, I don't you know what, my perspective on that is like, I'm a, I have some paranoia issues, you know? Right. So if I think that way about somebody, I just try not to because then it upsets me. And if I get upset, then I have, I have to make an amends to that person or something at some point, and I'm just like, whatever. I don't, I don't care. But nobody can sabotage me. I'm the only person that can sabotage myself. Okay, that's real. What about you, Lisa? What do you um, think? I've seen it firsthand. Um, like in the when we was in jail, uh-huh. I've seen someone sabotage someone so, else. So talk got, about that. They kicked out the program. So t- I mean, talk about that because these are this podcast is going to go global. Okay, well, and people um, need to be able to identify and recognize certain situations that might like come in, at them. In jail, uh, <clears throat> we had this one girl who ended up getting something off somebody, and then she gave it to one of the other girls in our class because she wanted to be where that girl was in, 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 in the kitchen. She wanted her position as a cook, and she also wanted to be, I guess, head of the class, or I don't know exactly what her reasons behind it was, but she got the drugs, gave them to the girl, the girl done them. And then the next day she went and told the guard that that girl had done some drugs to drug test her. And then they did. And that girl got kicked out of the class and ended up getting shipped off to prison because of it. Dang, that's so, crazy. so it was, it was really, it was really sad because they, they, they had been in a, in a relationship like for seven years at one point together. Um, they were supposed to be best friends, you know, and, and I kept telling everybody that this girl was snake and everybody thought, no, Lisa's just crazy, but no. Come to find out, she was a freaking snake, an anaconda. So, <laughs> yeah, she she was. So this is an anaconda. An anaconda at that. So That's let the me tell snake you, you can possibly let be. Me tell you, and, like and, and, <laughs> and the class was the only reason that I didn't take her to the freezer and in the kitchen. Let's just say. Hey, you gotta be nice. You gotta be nice. Take her to the freezer. You gotta have your That's the, hey, that's the only <laughs> reason. Because if oh, I would have done that, then I would have got kicked out of the class. Yeah. So let's keep it PG. Take it to the freezer. That was PG. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. So and I seen that and I thought, wow. <laughs> but 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 in life, <laughs> I, even even like that can happen. Not even in jail, but outside. Yeah. Because there's people gonna try and sabotage your goals, mm-hmm. your dreams, yeah. your aspiration. But for for sometimes for for you for someone who in a position where recidivism is something that we're trying to stop. Yeah. And re- re- recidivism is trying to stop someone from offending again and going back to jail. That's what the word recidivism yeah. means. Yeah. And that's a serious term because just being able to have a career and having purpose, looking forward to doing something is important. But sometimes there are things in your way, people in your way who can stop you from accomplishing those things. Yeah. That's never. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 would, I could honestly say that that's, and for me, and in my opinion, there's not one person that can stand in the way of where I'm going. Right. Nobody can stand in my way of getting clean. Nobody can stay in the way of reconnecting with my son. Nobody stop me from being able to get in a barber school. Right. And I, but but everybody's not strong like that, Shane. You know you, 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 your mental is a, a lot stronger than most people's. And, and you've overcame a lot to put yourself in that position. It's, it's not just that. <clears throat> I have people I, that I can call on, that I can rely on. People that are, are that are standing next to me to help. You could get in my way, but I've got a I got a whole group of people that's gonna make sure that I push through. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is that you gotta have a support system. Yes. <clears throat> and you have to let just the support system in your life who talk positive in your life, you have to keep them around yeah. and be open and honest with them. Yeah, if you at, stand alone, you usually fail. At first my husband, I'm not gonna lie, he didn't want me to come. He didn't want me he didn't want me in school, he didn't want me to do the class because he's dying of brain cancer, but and 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 he kept saying, I don't want you to go because I want you to, when you get out, I want you to spend all your time with me until I die. And I want you to do this until I die. And at first, he was not down with it when I got out. And mm. then now that he sees, you know, he's met Craig. And now that he sees, like, how much it means to me and, like, how much, you know, Craig believes in me and how much I can do it, now he's behind me 100%. Right. So, and I, and I told him, I was like, I've got to have a future for when you do pass. I need something, you know. And that's a tough conversation. Yeah. I need something, you know, I'm, I've got to have something other than let's go sell some drugs like back in the day or let's do, you know, I, it's just not, it didn't work and it's not going to work ever. Right. So <laughs> you try to have some purpose yeah. to have some goals, 
to set some aspirations yeah. to say, hey, I yeah. gotta do this. Yeah. Because you, you, you see where it got you and you're trying to change, you're trying to do, but also talk about, you, now you have two boys and yep. talk about how you have inspired your two boys. Um, okay, I have Brandon who's 22 and Dalton who's 18. Um, but since I went and got, uh, since I'm going into this class uh, and figured out how to get the funding and, and, and paid for, uh, now my sons are going to go, uh, one's going to go for welding and the other one's going to be do like computer sciences. But, but they see me going and doing all this and they keep, keep talking about how proud they are of me. And, and so now that, that encouraged them to go Right. Do something. And, and that's what so. typically happens at times. You will be in a position where when you're strong enough to get past the addiction, strong enough to get where you want to go to be in a positive position to change some things about yourself, your life. Other people are watching. Yeah. And you can be their ripple. You can be their role model to change, too, because I think people want people want to change. People want to take care of themselves and the family. People don't want to be, people want to be in a, in a good, in a positive position, more than a negative position. But sometimes you just don't know how to get to that point. Yeah. It's true. And seeing someone who, who's in the same situation like you, seeing the tools and the, 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 the things that they use to get out of that position, you can inspire someone. Yeah. I mean, I live in Tyler Projects right now. I don't plan on living there forever. Right. You know, but I live in Tyler Projects. You know, I just got out of jail. But if, if, if I can do it, then, like you said, certainly anybody can go do it. You want change. Yeah, definitely. But, uh, <clears throat> but I know it's easier said than done. It's easier said than done. So what are some things that you, you would say to someone? Because <clears throat> I'm pretty sure temptation is out there. Oh, yeah. And it's so easy to go back. So what keeps you? What keeps you from You're talking about going back and relapse? Yeah, what keeps you? What what? Because you can help someone. What? I, I, this this is what keeps me, and this is this is, one hundred percent honesty, is I would I would take I, I would take my own life before I went back to living in addiction. Mm -hmm. It's the most miserable time I ever had in my life. The things that I, I I did hurt my family. You know, I wasn't the best brother. I wasn't a father. I wasn't <laughs> I was an uncle. But I was, it was I was the crazy uncle, you know, and I know that before I ever pick up again, I'd pick up a phone because there's I cannot go back to that state. I've worked so hard to get my mental health back mm -hmm. that if I picked it up day one, my mind would just it would the guilt would eat me alive. So I think about all the all the consequences that would come to me. And then I look at my family. I look at how proud they are of me. I'd look back on this podcast. You know, I'd look back on the people that I help. You know, I, I just, I have a standard. I hold, I have a high standard for myself. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm still building myself now. I'm a baby in recovery. Right. You know, and I'm also a baby in life now because I've never lived life not high. Mm. So I have to learn all these things again. I can't just turn to aggression anymore like I used to because that was, that was just out of fear and out of protection of myself because I was alone. Now I just have to, you know, calmly be cool with people that I don't want. Like. Excuse me. You I know? mean, this is going to help someone. I know it is. What about you, Lisa? What, what can you... Um, well, I... What keeps you? What, I attend what, medication-assisted treatment, um, but I, I go to... I, attend a, a place in gray um, and I have to go every day for for medication treatment um, and I see my counselor twice a week and I have to do group uh, sessions twice a week um, and like you said just just think of like the cause and effect like I've slipped up one time since I've been out not gonna lie yes I did and during that one slip up I about lost everything I mean Got to a fist bump with my husband over, I mean, just me being an idiot, you know, and, and just from that one slip up, you know, and now I think it was maybe good for me to relapse that for that one time because I look back on what's going to happen just and it's going to be the rest of my life if I keep continuing to do what I've done. So. So, so what I had too, you got to have a support system. <clears throat> yeah. Have someone who can 
help you hold yourself accountable. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's the sponsor. 100% sponsor. Mm -hmm. Then you have your counselor, you know, and then you have your therapist. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, this isn't easy. Nothing, nothing about this is, is ever going to be easy. Right. You know, it's like, that's a fact. I got a great counselor and you need it. I think you need someone too that's been there before they know, you know, that they've been there. My sponsor's got 35 years. I've had some counselors that have never been there before and they don't know, like, you know, they're just, you can just tell that they don't understand. They're, they're not. So you think. A big shout out to Daryl Nunley there. (laughs) You need somebody that's been there before. (laughs) What are you thinking, Jay? Uh, I mean, it's dope that knowing that both of them have overcome so much and they're trying. I mean, it's, that's all you can really do is try. A lot of people don't even try. They just, they just give up so quick. As long as you keep trying, I mean, there's no reason you should, like, you should fail. But so. what I'm hearing is that everyone has a story to tell. Everyone has a story to tell. And when you think yours is the worst, mm-hmm. there's someone who's way below you. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like, like for me, for instance, I was 21 before I did drugs. I didn't drink alcohol. I didn't do none of that. Mm. I lost my father. Gave him CPR, my, and his last breath was mine leaving his body. Mm. I didn't know how to be, and somebody offered me methamphetamines. Mm. And from that moment on, I killed my pain for the rest of my life. And then I lost my little baby sister. It was not my baby sister, but my little sister to an overdose. And I went hard for a year. I'm talking about crack meth, pain pills, fucking drink as much alcohol as I could possibly drink. Mm. Plenty of times my mom had to put me in a tub and had to call somebody for help to do it. And uh, I, was, I was just, I woke up one day and I was like, I'm more, I'm more, I got back on my mental health pills, you know, lots of lithium. <laughs> And I just woke up one day and all I see is food that my mom's brought me in piss bottles. And I couldn't even take my own dog out because I had a motorcycle wreck, you know? So even to get up and piss was way too painful. And I said, I started getting addicted to the pain pills the doctor was giving me. And I was like, oh, this is a cop out. I can do this. Nope. And people think it's just easy, you know what I mean? It's not easy. And, and it's, it's a, the scariest thing to do is to stop. It's the scariest thing in the world to stop using because reality is going to hit you so fucking hard that you do not want to be here no more. Yeah. That's when you start feeling again. When you stop using, you're not numb to it no more. That's when you start feeling again. And that's like you said, that's, that's the hardest part is feeling again. And you thought you was frustrated working in the factory. <laughs> you thought you had the worst time yeah, ever. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's crazy. But the, that, those feelings are your best friend. Yeah, that's what you mean. I have learned that they are your best friend. Because if I didn't feel how I feel about life, I wouldn't be as good as I am with people nowadays. Mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> want to give people hugs. I wouldn't want to hear people tell me that they love me. You know, when I first came into the rooms, I was like, why is everybody telling me they love me, dude? This is the weirdest shit ever. This is a cold <laughs> Aff- affirmation, <laughs> positive, yeah. positive reinforcement. Yeah. I remember Craig for the first two weeks. Every time he'd tell me, I'd ball, wouldn't I? I yeah. mean, I just start balling. I mean, for balling. me, for me, I mean, I'd go into the classroom and I, and I would just tell the women, "Hey, you're worthy. You are important. You are someone." Mm-hmm. Because hearing some of you guys' stories when we had to, because I gave him so much homework and I gave him like an essay almost like every other day. And through the essays, they would express themselves and tell their feelings. And some of those feelings was hard. Yeah. Because, and some of the girls, they would cry when they would express themselves because it, it was almost, it was group therapy. And <clears throat> you, 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 you want to p- put these things and cipher them underneath the rug, but sometimes you have to face them and understand, yo, I've been through that. It, it happened. And what was our slogan? Do what now? Our slogan, NF. NF. Which one? NF. NF. Oh, not for long. Yeah. Okay. N- so I tell them. As I said, and if. Not NF, for long. N- NFL, not for long. Not for long. What, is, what you've been through is not going to define you yeah. the rest of your life. It's a time. And then the girls started buying into that. And they would just love everything we, we just portrayed. Um, then we had a 
the quotes, excuses are the tools of incompetence, mm -hmm. which build monuments into nothingness. And a person who practices them will sell them at nothing else. Yes. And then we'd have one of the favorite quotes, life is like a jalapeno. Oh yeah, life is like a jar of jalapenos. Don't get in today what might burn your ass up tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that was mine. <laughs> and well, we had a ton of great quotes. I mean, we had over like, uh, we had a quote and we, and yeah. <laughs> that was that's a, that was a that's a great quote. You know what I mean? And we had uh we had over a hundred quotes. We wrote a book in jail. What was the title of the book? Um, <laughs> mindset adjustments of the future five. Uh, future lessons or life lessons of the future five. Yeah, we wrote a book, and oh, the book yeah. is awesome. I mean, it, the book talks about the day to day process. Talks about have all the quotes in there. Have a um, a section where you can take notes. You still laughing about that quote? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it was, but but what that did, what that did, it gave them purpose, because none of them now they are authors, they are all authors of a book. It gave them purpose, it gave them a meaning, it gave them um, to see, gave, gave them reason to see that you know what, I was taking testing, I was studying every day, I was writing essays, I was doing a lot of stuff, and I still persevered, I still passed my tests. And imagine passing your test with a with a hundred. Oh yeah, no, I haven't done it. Yet. I've done it four times. You, you four say times. passing your test with a hundred. Four times I did. Imagine that. I'm talking. About, I'm giving them book work, school work every day, and on the weekends it'd be like tons of homework. Keep you keep your mind occupied. Yeah, it did. It did. Yeah. Definitely did. Yeah. But uh, I guarantee but it, you, there was group sessions of studying together. Yeah. But then what it started doing. They started saying the other girls in the pods was was starting to want to be part of the classroom, yeah. and the other girls was helping them with their homework. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it kind of just kind of gave a sense of pride for the whole pod because they were sending y'all off, yeah. and they would come back like, "How was school today?" Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think one of the key lessons I learned is giving people purpose. Yeah. Telling someone that you care about them. Telling someone that they they matter. It's also accountability. <clears throat> right. Holding somebody accountable for their actions mm -hmm. is key. That's that's why I believe that recovery resource is so good with that. Mm -hmm. If uh, <clears throat> like if, in, within each house you hold each other accountable, you know, and let's let's say that uh, you know, we're living in the same house, right? And you did something, and I didn't call you out on it. And they know I didn't. Well, now we're partners yeah. for the next week, and we they, they bet we don't do that again. Yeah. You know, it's that's the whole thing. It's like if somebody's feeling down, mm -hmm. like there's a, depression is real. You know, some people don't want to get out of the bed. Some people don't want to go to work. Some people are just grumpy. Mm. So <laughs> it's it's our job to take oh. that step forward and be like, hey, man. Uplift. Let's go. Let's go hit some golf balls. Inspire. Or, let's go bowling. Oh man, I, I ain't got no money right now. You're like, you know what? I got fifty bucks. I'm willing to throw that thirty down on it. Let's let's go have a good time. You right. know what I mean? And when it's just, I love that freaking place, man. So now you have a career. Now you're working on a career. Working on the working on the is it careers? A career. Yeah, careers. Careers career. more than one because yeah. you want to do. You, you work right now. You're in barber school. Right. Barber school, which is. But you, Achieving your dream in your career um, is a step by step. Like we got to have people to be able to be there for us and help mm -hmm. us, right? Right. Well, there's going to be situations with with recovering addicts. Mm -hmm. They're living is over living. Right. They have certain things they have to do. There's certain things that they're sometimes their brains just aren't fucking working, man. You know. So we uh, we think about that whenever we go into our day to day, you know, like uh, conversations with you in the beginning, you're a very positive, positive man, right? right? Um, but at the same time, I've, I call, I call people that are not in recovery and stuff like that normies, you know, you don't know what they do with the house, but whenever you're saying you're, you're a recovering addict, you automatically feel that people are judging you. You automatically feel like, there's a little stand back. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is, I stood back on my own. Because I felt that. Right. You know, so it's like, 
anybody that wants to go and and do barbering that's a recovering addict just know that it's it's not about people judging you it's about you have to just be yourself and what other people think of you is none of your fucking business and just be there for them and it's going to be that little bit of anxiety because you want to know people judging what people think of you and Mm. people looking at you and you're thinking like man what are they looking at yeah and you're just saying that's just normal Mm. people might just want to say hello to you and you're freaking out for no reason yeah or they don't want to say anything right and you have days like that also so and it's not bad no you know it's not i overthought it for a while i mean hell i was in class by myself for two and a half months in your school right you know i took tests by myself i studied by myself i i didn't didn't entwine with everybody you know, I would talk to them every now and again. But now, like you said, they... I, I think it probably started when we had the basketball team and everybody came together and everybody was yeah. happy that you came on our ba- on the school basketball team. Yeah. Yeah, I about blew my knee out. On that. <laughs> <laughs> the stretch. The yeah. Stretch, eh? I about blew that out, man. That was fun. It was. So, I just like yelling at people. Yeah. When going, ah! <laughs> so, so what does it feel like to, to know that you're having a career now, at least in something that... Um, Good. It feels good. Uh, and not have to worry about, you know, going back to old ways. And my kids are so proud of me. Like, that's that's the main thing. Like, my kids are so freaking proud of me. And, like, that's they tell me all the time how proud they are of me. So you completed the first part, which is becoming a nail technician. Mm-hmm. Now, what made you want to come to barber school now? Um, I don't know. Just that, well, something else into, you know, like, you know, if I do have my own place one day I can do hair and nails it's both together that's more money you right. know um but I want to get into teaching right okay so so you better be versatile yeah and learn how to do yeah. nails and yep. then you learn how to yep. barber so you could possibly yeah. just teach yeah, yeah. I, I, I would hire you too yeah I'd definitely hire you as an instructor I think it's important again um <clears throat> just seeing how invested you are how serious you are about the the trade and, and saying that you know what I want to be a, a teacher one day yeah. because it, it took some time and some strength to be like, you know, I want to lead people because yeah. for so long people you, have knocked you down. Well, I remember you kept telling me, at least I can see you as a teacher one day. And I'd be like, no, no, no. For like the longest time, I was like, no way. And then now I'm like, yeah, I can do it. I can do that. Yeah. I mean, we, we had some really positive sessions. We had some good days. We had some, <clears throat> and I would go there in the, in the jail in the morning and I'd get there by like, get there by like nine o'clock and i remember just you guys just waiting sitting down there waiting for me to come and just so happy we could see his tall head <laughs> walking past the field because we'd have to jump to see him but yeah. he's at walking by it was just ready to start <laughs> class i mean that, that brought a lot of joy to me just coming to the jail i mean at first i didn't know what to think i didn't know i i, I didn't know i didn't want to prejudge no one which i didn't i, I was my whole focus was just coming in there just to help just to help. And initially, you guys were like, this. I was like, who is this? <laughs> I thought, like I said, I thought it was going to be some little old lady. Right. And, but then, <laughs> little hateful woman. Yeah. <laughs> and then we started off in a, in a circle with everybody sit down in a circle and just have a normal conversation and just vibe and just talk about. But before the class started, every morning, everyone would have to have a quote. Everyone would have to have a quote. And at first, the girls, they was like, ah, uh, the quotes were just whatever initially. But then you see that it started getting serious because they were looking forward to it. And if, if someone forgot, if I forgot to give somebody their turn and say a quote, they'd be like, I didn't get my turn. Everybody would be so joyous. Brittany, just remember, sh- Brittany used to want to be passed at first, and then they're like yes. towards the middle, and the end, she'd be like, you forgot me. Because yeah. initially, you, you, you're coming into this class, everyone is quiet. You can just see the development of how every, all those women started opening up. How would you start opening up? Because you come into an environment where you have to learn and teach, and for the longest people don't even believe that you can do this. A lot of people are against you. A lot of people are telling you, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough, you're not going to be nothing, you're not going to make it. Now here I come in telling them, hey, I mean, you're great, you're awesome, you're, you're, you're inspiring, you can do this. You are a really smart person. You got a lot ahead of you. You are someone. You are somebody. And 
as I started saying that, all you guys, your confidence just started yep. coming up. And all the directors, the CEOs, the, the chiefs in the jail was like, they could see it. Yep. Everybody started talking about your confidence. Everyone started talking about how they, they, they started seeing a change in you guys. Do you remember people saying stuff to you oh, specifically? Yeah. Yep, I do. What uh, were some things that people say to you and, and how? Um, like, you just like, they'd say that the way we, we presented ourselves, like the way we stood, just everything. That right. We just seemed so much more, more confident and, and like we took more pride in <clears throat> and, and working like at our work. I mean, even working in the kitchen, there was just little things that we could do. Right. You know, just. And then you guys started standing out because what I started doing is bringing makeup. You guys put makeup. Oh, in. Lord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got to do makeup every Friday um, and it was cool for a while. And then a new lieutenant took over and we wasn't allowed to do makeup no more. So, but, yeah, how, but, how, but it did, man, it, it, you're in jail and you get to do makeup once a week. I mean, it made you feel like you the shit. It did. <laughs> uh, it did. I would, so um, one of the funniest things for me, right? And I don't even know how, how, I was just happy you guys was happy. Um, you do your nails, you just get really nice with it. Um, they'll get the makeup on Friday. And I come back on Tuesday, and some of the girls said, "You know, I haven't washed my face. I kept the makeup on. We still have our makeup on. We wouldn't wash it off, so we want to I, stay on." I mean, but just it, it just made a sense of pride, and you go going that far just to you, that means something because you want to feel like yourself because yeah. a lot of stuff is stripped from you, yeah. and it, it makes you feel less of a person. But when you, when makeup days, you guys felt like yep. Like some, you know what I mean? And I was happy just to do that. I think that was important. Did you feel like a person again? Right. It did. I mean, we had some, the, the class was so good. It was so, so much information. I mean, it, and it seemed like I would be there from nine to like 12 and the girls would be like, man, it's 12 o'clock already. Fly by. It'd be like, it would just like fly by. It seemed like it'd be like 10 minutes. It would, it would fall out. That's how you know you're enjoying it. Because when you ain't enjoying it, you always think about when it's I mean, going it, it seemed like we, we, we got there in the morning. I mean, and we was constant in the book mm -hmm. doing something. And from 9 to 12, the time was just like, they'd be like, it's time already? Then it'd bring them lunch. And then in a couple of days, I brought, um, I had some food catered in. Yeah, he brought holy taco. Uh, um, Black olive. Then you, uh, you and Robin had made us a salad. Yes. Just the little things awesome, are important. Man, it was. Just the little things. And, and again, just changing the trajectory, just making you feel like yeah. someone where you feel like, you know what, when I get out, I have a chance. Talk about that. Thinking about when you get out, you have a chance. Oh, yeah. Um, just, the, just knowing that I have something ahead of me that I can count on for, you know, the rest of my time. And also I can build on it, you know, add to it, you know, it's took so much stress off of me and like my kids and my husband. I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's unreal. It really is. So Shane, let me ask you a question. So both of you guys got into the program at different times. Mm -hmm. How much you think it would have helped you if you'd started the program in jail? Well, <clears throat> or do you think uh, a better question? Do you think that, we need to do some things now to help keep inmates active so they can look forward to. I mean, I agree to an extent because I, I know these, I, I know, I know inmates, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It always, there's always a one or two of them that just ruin it. Right. You know? So to judge, it's like, I would say it would be cool for, um, people that would be in position for trustee job, mm -hmm. people that they could trust. Right. Mm -hmm. Because other than that, you're going to get your whole thing screwed off by somebody who really don't give a shit. Well, you have to have some qualifications getting into the program. Well, yeah. there, there was an instance where, you know, a bunch of girls got in trouble and done drugs and ended up going down. Yeah. Like we lost like how many girls? The first, the first, we started with like 14, 14, 15 girls. And then we ended up with five. So, you yeah. know, so. <clears throat> Winning. Yeah. 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 So. So I mean, it was some strict guidelines. Yeah. There was some strict guidelines. Yep. Yeah. But one of the few things, one of the things that I heard some of the CEO said to me personally, he's like, man, it brings down a lot of tension because a lot of girls 
and men who are looking forward to you teaching. Yeah. And they know if they act up, if something happens, they're not going to get that opportunity or that chance because the guys, I would pass walk by the guys every day and they're like, man, Craig, you're teaching the women. When you going to come teach us? We need some love too. Craig, come on, I see what you're doing with those girls, those women. You can see them changing their lives and they're getting careers, they're getting certificates. We need, we need, and there's only so much. And, and I know it takes some time, resources, and then it takes like manpower with a, with a um, correctional officer to be there to kind of help. So there's so many things that play a role into these things. Take some, dude, this sheriff. Sheriff's number one. Mm -hmm. Got to talk to the sheriff. Right. Because if you can convince the sheriff, you can do anything you want, you know? So it's like, I think it would be great for, for guys to be able to do that. Guys and women. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. guys and women. Um, but if you're going to do it, I would like. You got some serious, some strict guidelines. It's, 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 not, it's not that. It's just, it's the classroom size. Right. You know, like how many people would you want class? Because you got, you got well, inmates. You got about 90 to 108 inmates in a little jail. You know, and then, like she said, somebody will get somebody fucked off. Right. Well, That's just how it goes. I think that the, a good number is about five to ten about at a ten, time. Yeah. And those are usually, like, in my opinion, it would be, if you're holding a class for, with five to ten, you're looking at exit dates, mm -hmm. um, parole dates, right, and things like that, because those are going to be the ones that are, and you don't have to be, they don't have to be felons, uh, misdemeanor guys that are in there on 109 days would fucking, they, they, it helped them tremendously because they're usually the ones that get fucked with the most. And I think the people who are, uh, yeah, about 30 to 60 days, 75 days, 90 days who are on, on the verge mm -hmm. of six months and under, hopefully, I mean, that's a good time. Well, you they're not getting for, any good time for this, right? Um, no. Um, no good time. Mm -mm. Okay. No. What does that mean? Good time means uh, two for one. Some programs you get two for ones for it. No, and I didn't get good time for, for no me having a job for the class either. either. I just went straight. Were you, were you already getting two for one? No. So it's no. just. Even though I, I, we had to have a job for, to take the class, I didn't get the two for ones for working in the kitchen. Did you get a um, I, don't, I don't know. Um, I think maybe six. But yeah, I we didn't. Washington County? Yeah. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't have Do better any Washington two for County. ones in the job or in the classroom. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I mean, but just, but just an opportunity, and, yeah. and that's the thing. Yep. I think most people just want an opportunity. Yeah. An opportunity and, and, and feel a sense of purpose, and that's what it's about. An opportunity to feel a sense of purpose, because yeah. that can go a long way. Yeah. Because eventually, you're getting out, and you, you're going to be in this community. Yeah. And you, it, you, you're people's neighbors. It depends on what community you want to be in. <clears throat> right. But so it's important that we now, from the outside looking in, that hey, let's try to help with some resources. Because if we don't help with some resources, if we don't give people the opportunity to better themselves, if we don't give people the opportunity to change the trajectory of their, their family. Um, like for me, the, for the barbering course part that I'm taking now, mm -hmm. DHS is paying for. Right. Um, it's vocational rehab. So anybody can go down there, you know, if you've had like, you know, substance abuse or anxiety, get disability, that type of thing. It's it doesn't point. take, but like maybe one Zoom meeting and maybe three conversations other than that, and they will get the funding paid for, they will get it covered. And, and that's a good point, because a lot of people don't know where to go. I'm happy you brought that up. A, yeah. good, a good point. There's resources out there for you. There's resources out there for felons who are on their way out. There's resources, felons, or people who are who getting out of jail mm -hmm. to help you change your career. For, for instance, for one is vocational rehab in most cities. Go down to the food sim office. Go yeah. down to the career services offices. If you don't have a car, they'll mm -hmm. do a Zoom meeting with you like they done me. Mm -hmm. And then they give you a bus pass after yes. that. So so, so, th so there are options out there for you. So don't think you are there by yourself. Talk to your sponsor. Talk to your advocate. Talk to um, an attorney. Or even just call a school in your local area and say, hey, this is where I'm at. Be transparent and say, hey, do you have any resources to help me get to where I want to go? Because... And it's for HVAC, it's for plumbing, it's for cooking, it's for welding, it's for barbering, it's for aesthetics, it's for nails, cosmetology, any type of career you want out there, there's options for you if you are a felon. There's options for you if you've been in some type of legal type of situation. There are options for you, because I know a lot of times 
people don't feel that there are resources and options for them. It's just important to know there are. There's two different kind of felons. There's felons like me. You know, I got 13 felonies. It's been over 14 years since I've had a felony. Mm -hmm. Got a felony one time. Then you have aggressive felons. Right. It's a whole different ball game. Yeah. For sure. And drug felons. Mm -hmm. A whole different ball game, which is aggressive. You know, so it's a, uh, I'm not, I don't know. Cause I know in one of the questions they asked if, if any of my right. felonies were aggressive. <laughs> well, they're going to go, they're going, they, there's going to be some screening. Yeah. There's going to be some yeah. screening, you know what I mean? Because now they, they want you to follow through and they want you to finish. Yeah. But if you want some help, if you want some help, you want to change the trajectory of your life. You want to do some things different mm -hmm. and you, and you serious about it and you mean it. Hey, th this, this government programs out there that can help you. If you study YouTube videos on how to fade, this is a school for you. Yep. <laughs> so how, how, how do you, so what, what is, I know Tawana, we're getting ready to finish up this podcast. What is, what is one thing that you want to say to someone? What is, what is, what is a, a word of advice you want to give to someone out there looking in the camera? I was like, man, I can, I can identify with that guy. I can identify with Lisa. Man, I'm, I've been there. I know how it is. Um, physically abused, mentally abused. You know what I'm saying? All those things happen. Um, drugs, um, close to overdose, all these things. Ha there are people out there who want change and sometimes they don't think there's change for them. They don't think that they can get on top of, uh, or get, a, get above water and breathe. I would say one thing to everybody. Or, or, or a few things. It's just, if you do what is easy, your life will be hard. If you do what is hard, your life will be easy. It's it's hard to do the right thing, but it pays off in the end. The people that you acquire along your little road, uh, you won't be traveling it alone anymore because the person you become is going to start attracting the people that you're supposed to have in your life. But if you decide to go down a different path, that dark path, that one that you're used to, you might have nothing but those shadows people, man. Ain't no good. And I, and I know you talk about medication. All, all those things play a factor. Having Mental some... health is number one. Right. I know sobriety comes first. Not for me. Mental health comes first. Because if I'm not mentally okay, then I, I'm, my addiction takes over 100%. Take your medicine. Talk to your therapy. Just figure it out. Mental health comes first. 100%. Mr. Major, what do you think, Lisa? What, 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 um, what can you say and, and talk about that um, medication and how that would help you? Um, <clears throat> medication, by me going and getting, you know, medication every day, that keeps me from doing, you know, other things. Like, right. you, know, you know, the things I was doing, like meth and, you know, other stuff. So um, I believe some people it's not for them, you know, but I'd done this for, for 14 years before and was completely clean other than the medication I was on. So... For me, that's what works. Um, but the biggest investment you can make is in yourself. Just believe in yourself, just go try it. I mean, just go, just try to do something that you want to do. Just go try it. And then if you do it and then you don't like it, then hell. I mean, you could say, I gave it a shot, mm -hmm. you know, but it's the feeling that you'll have in yourself is the best feeling in the world. It what, is. What, most of the time, if you yeah. feel like you don't want to do it, you should be doing it. Yeah. So, but it's, 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 you just, it's, it's a good feeling. What'd you think, Jordan? What'd, what'd you hear today, man, as we close? What did you, what'd you want to say? <laughs> uh, obviously, they've, uh, they both have their life decisions and what they've gone through. And um, it's, it's great knowing that they're both doing good now and they're trying their best to overcome their past and, you know, looking for a brighter future. You know, I'm, uh, it's a it's a it's a pleasure meeting both of y'all. You know, I'm, I'm proud of both of y'all. Uh, if somebody's told you that already, I'm sure they have. But uh, y'all just keep doing y'all's thing. I mean, obviously, and I mean, me being a barber for three years, it's the it's the best career in in the world, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, there's nothing better you could ask for. I mean, it has everything you could possibly want, but it's what you make out of it too. So, love it, bro. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, no problem. I'll leave it to you, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and again, um, recidiv- recidiv- recidivism is a real word. And that's one of the things, the key things I think the country needs to work on and help people with. Um, people are reoffending, going back to jail. And if we can do our part in our industry, I think it's we need to take time and, and, and talk to people, help people, try to try to lead them, lead them on that path to that way. Because sober living, um, recovery resources, all these things are out there to help people get back on track. Mm-hmm. And for, for you guys to do your part, people in the community also have to have a heart and care to do it their part too. Because it just can't be you doing your part, you doing your part, and everybody's turning their shoulders on you, closing the door on you, because it makes you feel twisted. You know what I mean? It makes you feel like, man, I'm trying to do my part. I'm, I'm busting my butt. But nobody turn- wanna help me. But nobody wanna help me. Yeah. So it has to be a twofold thing. And I hope people out there in their jobs and their careers and would, would, would open their hearts and open their minds to give someone a chance to help themselves and help their family, because each one of us, sometimes we, 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 we're that close from being addicted to something. Yep. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody's that close to being addicted to someone. And, and don't say it, can happen, it can't happen to you. Yeah, I was addicted to food there for yeah. a while. Because that's not something that you said, you said like you grew up saying, I want to be addicted. My sister used to, you know, say, uh, she, they, Lisa, just wake up and don't take it. Just stop taking pills. Just stop it. And I was like, well, it's not that easy. Right. Then she hurt her back. She started taking pills and then she got, she found out that got on the same path. So mm-hmm. she seen exactly how, you know, and I was like, you know, just wake up, stop taking. And she's like, it's not that easy. I was like, now you know where I'm coming from. Yes, so. man. Mm, this is a solid, solid, yeah. solid podcast. I do a shout out. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Recovery Resource. Uh, if you're in the Tri-City area, Kingsport, Johnson City, or Elizabethan, uh, there's houses all over here for, uh, for men. And there's also Bridge Shore for women which would be uh, Tabitha Edwards, Craig Forrester, and uh, Kia, I'm going to say Forrester, because they've been together long enough to work. Yeah. Yep, and shout out to um, again, uh, New Life Medicine. Uh, we're going to partner with New Life Medicine to work on some recovery and resources for people who are going through situations. Um, Dr. J and uh, Mark Beatty, um, also Families Free. There's so many resources free. Uh, free. out there to help. Yep. So a situation, and I think this podcast was important today because it's going to help someone. Someone out there was going to listen. Someone out there is going to watch and see that, hey, you know what? Man, let me give somebody a chance, uh, someone who has an uh, opportunity to give jobs, someone who has an opportunity just to kind of yeah. give someone an upper hand, not a hand out, but an yep. upper hand, will change their, their heart, their mindset, and be like, you know what? This is, this is my community. Let me help. Yeah. And we, we love you. Because this is all, it's not just one person, this is all, it's all of us. It takes all of us to mm-hmm. change the, the trajectory for people to get on track. Yeah. 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 Again, Barber Car Success brought to you by Craig Charles of Crockett's Academy, JC, Crockett's Academy, Bristol. Spreading love the JC way is one way, but you know how we do it. Spreading love the Crockett's way is one of the main way. Coming at you, my guy Jay Bar back in the saddle. Um, great podcast today, and thank you, um, Shane. Um, Thanks, thank you, Lori. Thank you, Lise, for coming in and sharing your time with us and just expressing yourself. I know sometimes yes, it's, it's, it's difficult and, and rough sharing your story, but your story is going to impact so many others. Your story is going to help so many people, and that's the importance of that. What's the last thing you got to say, Jay? The last thing I always say, man, live life, have fun, go be great. Um, don't be scared to try new things. Don't be scared to fail. Uh, obviously, you just keep pushing to be great, man. That's all it is. That's all it's about. What do you think about the podcast? It was a great podcast today. It's, it's, I'm, I'm glad to be back on here because I always be. I text Craig every Monday about podcast today. He's like, Nah, not today. I'm like, Dang, come on, come on, like, come on. I'll be looking forward to it. So, yeah, so it's, it's yep. nice. Shout out to Feed Spot for ranking us the top 25 podcasts in the world, the top five podcasts in the United States, over 70 countries. Uh, we're knocking over 170 episodes right now. Hit us up. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know your feelings. Again, Barbara success. Peace. Mm-hmm.